Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name's Drew. This is Just a Guy Linux on YouTube. And I wanted to talk a little bit about my own issues today. Uh, I think we all have issues. <laughs> I'm no different than anybody else. And I wanted to kind of vent a little bit about my own problems. When I, you start looking at videos um, of other people and they're running what you consider to be better or later and greater and newer. You always want the new sexy, right? And the fact of the matter is, as I try to like reconfigure my, um, my production machine several times over, I came to the conclusion, you know what? I just don't need it. You know, I am running a Debian stable now after trying to just like oh i'm going to put the new kernel on and this that and the other you know what do i need it no the answer is no so you know it's like do i need to run wayland no do i need to be on uh you know arch or fedora or anything no i don't so the answer to my own question which i've kind of just been rolling around and trying to figure out how to configure uh, my production machine is do i need the latest and greatest no. Why don't you just put stable in and be done with it? And that's what I have. I've what I've redone on my uh, on my production machine, which is using this uh, ultra wide monitor, um, is kernel five dot one. Um, you know Debian eleven bullseye. I mean, granted, I probably will update when the uh, when Debian uh, 12 comes out, but until then, which is a month away, I have no desire to do anything other than just the normal updates. But then you kind of say to yourself, yeah, but what if, no, you know what, no. <laughs> I am running an NVIDIA driver. Uh, I have this wide monitor that I love. Um, in terms of like snapshots and stuff like that, do I have it working? Yeah, do I have it working? Yes, the answer is yes. Let me go show you right here. And I have snapshots of the root and the home for, you know, after a fresh install and after configuration. Works fantastic. You know, I don't need anything else. And there should be no surprise that uh, after the last video I did, I, guess, I don't know, is that 10 days ago? I don't even know. Um, that I've kind of switched to the DK window manager. It's awesome. And I wanted to do another, I mean, even though I know it's kind of like piling on a little bit because I know that uh, Jake did two, Jake at Linux did two videos kind of highlighting DK window manager. But I wanted to talk about it for a few minutes, okay? Uh, this is 11 months ago, and uh, DistroTube did his kind of tier list for uh, window managers, tiling window managers, and uh, DK didn't even make the list. Now, I don't know, honestly, I don't know how, uh, how old DK is, in, but I know that Matt did a video uh, 10 months ago on the DK had a lot of nice things to say um, and but as far as Derek he did not put it even on the list to tear it up and that's cool I mean there's probably a lot of window managers out there and not to mention this is 11 months old uh, but when I listened to Jake do these two videos on DK um, it was like no, that looks cool to me so I tried it and I am not switching. And that's the bottom line. I guess the reason I like it is because of how it interacts the way I want it to with my ultra wide display. And I know that might just, that's not like everybody else. And, and you know, it's like if you have multiple monitors, you want something that behaves you the way you want uh, using, you know, two or three monitors or more, I don't even know. Uh, but I have one, and it's the, this ultra wide one, and and I like that. You know, that's my my. I've used two monitors in the past. I like this better. That's just the way it is. Okay, um, and so I've kind of like figured out 
ways to configure DK in order for it to work well using my ultra wide display. So even if I like put a couple windows out there, you know, it's not what you would call your normal uh, master and stack layout, even though it's using that. But you've, I changed the values in the configuration file to get it to behave the way I would want it to behave. Now, if I add one more now, it's going to stack on that screen. And that's fine with me because then you can always move it. But I like having kind of like three designated windows kind of like about the same size on, uh, on each workspace. Also, if I just add to the stack again, and if I want to, I say, oh, I want to make that floating. I just hold the Alt key down and move it, and now I can just move that window to where I want it to go, or just put it back. I mean, smart, you know, smart. So let me go over and let's take a look at the configuration, okay? And it's over here on this side, you can see uh, my configuration. Um, in terms of how, you know, using a shell script, um, oh, I wanted to mention one thing while I'm thinking about it, because I, I, I just saw this polybar.dk, uh, dash dk as a, um, uh, an open file here. Uh, I did uh, use backports for, for Bullseye to install um, the polybar. That's the only difference. Um, for this just being regular old, regular bullseye. Okay, anyway, just quick, quick side note. Anyway, um, so I have my auto start stuff here, and basically it, you know, there's nothing special about it, nothing special at all, okay? The real magic happens when you get to this point here. And granted, this is just a default value, 10 workspaces, it can be more or less. Um, but right here is where I spent probably most of the time I wanted to keep the tile layout. So this is basically default tile layout, okay? Master one, stack one, gap three. So basically it allowed me to open up three columns before it started to stack. So, you know, that's how you saw basically on this workspace one column, two column, three column, and then it's, you know, it, and it's stacked on the third column. Um, and you can have the gap size any way you want. Now this, again, is going to be active for every single workspace. You can have individual workspaces. I just commented them out, and I was actually uh, playing with this, a different type of layout on workspace three. This, uh, this was uncommented uh, for Workspace 10 by the developer, uh, which is, I have to tell you, when you look at a lot of these configuration files that are provided for you by the development team, a lot of times it's so vanilla and you have to go to the man page. Not this one, because you had so many like uh, special things involved in the configuration, you could say, oh, that's how that, works. You didn't really even, I didn't really have to go to a man page or anything because of how uh, this configuration file was written for us. So anyway, the M split and the S split, I've changed a few times just to try to get the exact right uh, splits when it comes to percentage of the screen for each column. Now again, you can always play with this. So let's say, oh, I wanted to go with 47 or 46 or 31 or 32. It doesn't even matter, okay? But as soon as you save it, you can just hit uh, Super Shift R, at least in my case, Super Shift R, and it will then display the right, you know, the, you know it will take on those attributes immediately. This is obviously changed for the way I wanted to. You know, I wanted these uh, lowercase three uh, three letter um, descriptors for each workspace and now we start to get again a little bit more um, I changed some colors 
And, but you, as far as rules are concerned, there was, I think, one or two rules maybe, but I set a few more. And I also changed this line here. And this is something I want to spend a little bit of time on. So let's, let's start with this, okay? So I have, you know, as far as GIMP is concerned, um, it's like most people with Linux, that's what they use for editing images. And, but I wanted it to go to my GFX workspace. So I have it workspace eight and focus equals true so that it goes to that workspace after launch. I have it uh, set up for a short, uh, a keybind for Super G for GIMP and it goes automatically to that workspace and opens up the app. Same thing for Discord, same thing for OBS, although it is workspace nine and 10. And actually I'm using a GitHub desktop uh, that in a, I think it was, no, that was a Debian file. I was, I was gonna say it was a uh, app image, but I don't think so. So, and that goes to workspace two. Now with floating, I see, I don't use like a lot of other people, I don't really use um, um, scratch pads, but I do like to have things floating uh, on open like Pavu Control or QIMGV. So like, for example, let's use QIMGV as the example, okay? I don't know if a lot of people use QIMGV. Uh, it's just something I like and have liked it for years. Um, so let's say, actually I have these backgrounds open. So if I just say open with QIMGV, okay? It goes right there. I can't move it unless I hold the Alt key. So if I hit the, hold the Alt key down, I can move that anywhere I want, okay? Um, let me close it real quick though, just so I can get to this portion of that. So when I open QIMGV, it floats, which is true. I want the width and the height to be these values, and I want it to open at this particular position on uh, my display. All of these can be changed. So like if you wanted to open up over in the top right corner, you could do so. Now this stick equals true. Okay, so let's just do that again. I'm gonna open up um, QIMGV. It, and so if I switch, let's just say to this blank workspace over here, it follows, it just sticks there unless I close it. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's just a thing for right now. Um, so that's something. Now let's talk about, <laughs> um, I love QIMGV. So like if I hit the F key, for example, it would blow it up. And then if I even move the uh, cursor up to the top, you can see I can say, oh, I want that one. Let me look at that. Let me look at that. And hit escape and it's back down to a uh, floating window. Okay, and let me close that. So the question also might be, hey, why do you have another terminal since you're using Tilex uh, and you're using it full screen when you, you know, when I, it's kind of your default. When I hit super enter, you know, my Tilex comes up. Why do you even have XFCE4 terminal? Well, it's kind of like this. So if I'm over here in Thunar and I just say open terminal here, it just pops up xfce4 terminal in the middle of the screen so so that i don't have to open up another you know so it doesn't open up um a portion of the screen that's uh, full screen uh, does that i don't even know if that makes sense but you get the idea basically it's just to have kind of like as a floater okay all right all right let's take a couple minutes to look at the xxhkdrc file um, like BSPWM, DK has, it's basically modular. So you have a bar that's separate. You have a, um, a hotkey window daemon or, or key daemon rather that's uh, managed by XXHD, I, I, which I like. Um, so, you know, you can see my XXHKDRC file is very common. Um, there are some things that the uh, developer put in um, that I've taken out, but you you get the idea of, you know, like I said before, he put in a lot of things and a lot of work into these configuration files so that you can actually like uh, say, oh, okay, that's how that works. So for example, like this section here, 
Um, Super Q, which is what I would always use for uh, killing a, uh, a window, um, it was default. But there was a, you know, in between this comma, there was another uh, thing called space and then comma, and that was swap. And I don't think I needed it, so I, because I usually use super space to launch Rofi. All right, I don't even know if I use Rofi all that much now. It's just there, everything is kind of like on a key bind, at least like 80%. So um, let me, let's go back over here because I did set this up kind of like A, B, and C. So if I hit super tab, you can see how it just basically, um, it changes the position of each open uh, window which is fine, that's all, it just cycles everything. Um, as far as changing um, the size of things, you can see how that's done here. But the one thing that I have used, probably more than anything else, is using the contr super control and then one through zero. So let's just say I am on this and I want to send it to, let's just say, uh, the sixth workspace. So I'm going to put, uh, it doesn't matter. Let me, so if I hit super control six, it's going to send it to the sixth workspace and it's going to follow it simultaneously. So if I, am, if I have multiple things open and I want to work on that uh, in its own workspace, all I have to do instead of sending it to the workspace using super shift one through zero, um, you hit super control and it automatically uh, sends it and follows it. So, but you know, if I hit super uh, four back, I'm, I'm back to where I was. But if I hit, go back to six and I hit super shift four, it leaves the blank space. But if I had hit control, it would have followed it over. So. You get the idea. It's pretty darn good as far as um, functionality. So I have used that quite a bit. You can change the gaps and change the borders in these in this section here. Um, so overall, I would just say this is severely underrated, just severely underrated. And I have no desire to change uh, anything about this. This is exactly, it's near, damn near perfect for what I need. Um, so um, I am going to kind of reiterate that I don't need the, uh, the latest version of anything. I am content with how everything works. Um, maybe that makes me a, you know, kind of a reactionary or whatever, but I'm, you know, cool. You know, I'm in my 50s. Do I really care? No. Um, so I'm just kind of sharing with you what I think uh, in terms of uh, how it makes uh, sense to me in my head. Um, you know, I look at what I have here and, uh, you know, I like it, you know. Is it fast? Yeah, it's fast. You know, I don't, I don't know what the... Uh, what the um, resource usage is like when you reboot. I have no, in fact, let's take a look. I got a bunch of stuff going right now, so I don't, it's not gonna be accurate at all. Uh, free, oh, free. All right, well, I mean, I'm using six something, I don't know. I've got nine gigs available, let's put it that way. Nine gigs out of 16. Uh, pff, come on, man. Pretty darn good, right? So anyway, I uh, just wanted to uh, thank you for those of you that have stuck with me <laughs> throughout this video of me rambling about stuff. Um, thanks again for those that have subscribed and for those that have uh, sent kind comments through, um, you know, with your comments for each video. And I'll see you next time. Bye.